Um, please excuse the quality of the webcam. It's not very good. Uh, my Mac is currently out of commission, so I'm having to do this on my brother's old laptop. Yay! Um, anyway, I've been out of town the past couple of days at a volleyball camp, so I'm um, working hard to get this done in a timely fashion. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is a lesson that I've actually done in the past, um, and I think it really fits with what we're trying to do here as far as making students aware of their own cultural identities and understanding how to um, recognize cultural preferences and um, and make better choices regarding this. So um, my lesson is actually regarding propaganda and rhetorical appeals. Um, let's go and pull up my lesson plan here. So when it comes to this particular lesson, the goal is to discuss propaganda prior to reading Animal Farm. Um, it's really more of a mini lesson and the intention is to make students aware of propaganda techniques and rhetorical appeals that are used commonly in propaganda and advertising so that when they see these things, when they see these commercials on television, they see these political campaigns, they're more aware of the bias and the spin that exists which will then make them a little more knowledgeable about, okay, what are they hearing as the audience? What are they intended to hear? Um, and dissecting that intended message and then making better critical choices based on that. Um, so anyway, the unit begins. We do um, an actual propaganda rhetorical appeals presentation. I can't find my other presentation. I think it's on my school account, which I no longer have access to because I'm switching schools. So um, this one doesn't look super pretty right now. doesn't have everything in it, but I wanted to throw something together for you guys so you had that um, to reference. But when it comes to this particular um, presentation, you go over propaganda. You talk about all the different types of propaganda, the different techniques with examples. Um, when I'm actually doing it in class in the, in the real presentation, I go through and I discuss, okay, what's going on in each of these pictures that they're seeing? Why is this name calling? Or why is this glittering generalities? Or why is it transfer? So you go through all of the propaganda techniques. And then, oops, don't go there yet. And so once I'm done with propaganda techniques, I then um, put up on the screen some different examples that we haven't seen before. And I actually asked the class as a full group discussion to have people raise their hand, all right, what propaganda technique do you think this is? And they tell me, and, I, and you know, we talk about why. Are they right? Are they wrong? We discuss it. Um, we also talk about spin, which is that heavily biased portrayal. When I first did this lesson, it was actually during the election. So um, Trump had not been elected yet. President Trump hadn't been elected yet. Um, however, it was interesting because that was a huge part of what was going on in current society. And we were able to just kind of talk about these things. Um, so what I actually did with the presidential campaign is I showed them a um, an anti-Trump political commercial from Hillary's team, and then I showed an anti-Hillary commercial from Trump's team, and then I showed a pro-Hillary commercial from Hillary's team, and a pro-Trump commercial from Trump's team. And so every one students were discussing who's the speaker, who's the audience, and what is the goal of this one? Is it to tear down the other person or is to lift the, you know, the um, person being promoted up? So we discussed those things and how to figure that stuff out and why bias exists and things like that. Um, the last part is we talk about rhetorical appeals. We do talk about the rhetorical triangle. I'd show some more ads. Um, I like to show a couple different commercials and let students talk about what they're seeing and why those things exist. But like I said, this is just kind of an outline of the presentation, not the original one. So that's why it's not as involved. Um, so back to my lesson plan. So students are going to do this first. Um, I did attach the guided notes if you want to see those. It's the same thing as what you just saw. But um, the students do this first. This takes a full day to go through this presentation simply because um, students can't, I mean, just talking about these things and having all the students discussing it takes a lot of time. Um, so you do that, you do the guided notes, and that's kind of end of day one. Day two comes in, and I like to do a journal. So I start off, I show them, a, um, I put the questions up on the board first, and I have them go ahead and write those questions down and leave space to fill it in so that they know what they're looking for. Um, then I like to show them a commercial. I usually show an ASPCA one because it's usually sad. Um, Sarah McLaughlin singing in the arms of an angel in the background, someone talking, sad doggy eyes, that kind of thing. Um, I show the commercial to students, and then I have them go back and on their own, they answer these questions about the speaker, the audience, the message, and then what are some of the propaganda techniques they saw? What rhetorical appeals were used? 
This allows me to informally assess what students remember from the previous day's notes, as well as to informally assess how much they have already learned just in that one day. Um, so we do that. Um, I also like to view. Oh, that's the assessment day. I might need to go as a pen. Um, then I also like to review um, the beginning of the film inside North Korea where you actually see some of the propaganda going on. Um, and that's pretty interesting because a lot of students don't realize that there are places in the today's world that do use propaganda still to control the minds of the people. And it's important for students to see that so that they won't be controlled by what they're seeing in the media, what they're reading in the newspaper, not they read the newspaper, but what they're reading online, you know, the whole fake news thing going on. We talk about all of that. Um, and after we spend a couple days doing these things, then we go into creating their own piece of propaganda. So the first thing students do, which will also be attached, is they do a project proposal sheet. So they decide what is the product, idea, or person they're promoting it has to be original. Um, then they do um, who is their intended audience. And they go ahead and brainstorm how they want to do it, whether it's video, whether it's an infographic, whether it's an online poster. And I'll post a couple examples of one I, ones I've received. Um, as well so you can see it um, and then it's um, um, how do they plan to promote these things so we do that proposal sheet that gives me time to assess um, I, and it is a formative assessment but it gives me time to say okay no that's not a good idea or that's not exactly um, the name calling technique how can you change it to make it more obvious they then get a couple of days to work on the assignment this is time where students have their own devices in class. I do have some Chromebooks they can use. Um, they have these things in class. They're working on these things. I can give individualized help to students who need it. Um, it's also time when I can help students navigate online tools, whether it's video or, um, you know, making, like, um, info. There's a website for infographics. Um, but that gives me time to help them personally so that we can answer questions as we go. And then the final part, they turn in their propaganda, and they also complete a um, propaganda. Here's the assignment sheet. Um, sorry, they turn in their propaganda project, and they also complete this propaganda reflection as part of their project, where they say, you know, the speaker, um, the audience, the message, the techniques used, why those are effective, um, the rhetorical appeals used, why they're effective. I find that this, by requiring them to do a reflection, it makes sure that they do everything right on the actual project. So if they're filling out the reflection, they're, like, they're saying, oh crap, I didn't use all three. They go back and they figure out how to add one. Or if they say, well, I use name calling, but they don't actually know how they use name calling, then they know that they didn't do it right. So hopefully that solves the problem before I get them. Rubric is really simple. Either you have it or you don't. That's how it's graded because we've spent all this time. It's either there or not there. The rhetorical appeal, I mean, sorry, the reflection gives me the opportunity as an assessor to go and see, all right, they say they have all three. They say this is name calling. Oh, well, that's why they got confused because that's not actually name calling. And that's where I can take the points away and it helps me know what exactly they did wrong. Um, so that's pretty much the assignment. After we do this, we go into, we read Animal Farm. We also do a DVQ with propaganda. That's usually going on during this propaganda mini unit, but I did combine this into like a five day spam in case that's how you wanted to use it. Um, but the great thing about uh, the propaganda um, project and the propaganda mini unit is that students start thinking more critically as we go. So. Students will come up to you and they'll say, oh, Miss Watley, have you seen the new blank commercial? And they're like, no, tell me about it. And so then they say, oh, well, they use whatever, and they're starting, you know, whatever technique. And I have students come in and they say they're sitting at home watching television with their parents, and they tell their parents, oh, my gosh, that was name calling right there. And so they're using it and they're recognizing it. And so they're becoming more critical viewers and more critical citizens, which is what we all want. Anyway, thank you.